So let's go through this step by step. So we are importing the, the whole set. We are setting it to matte holdout mode uh, with the render geometry settings and then adding a simple material. Putting it into a graph stage, that will create uh, a nice representation here in the scene graph. You can see it's under asset and set. And then once you start adding stuff, if you call it blast or you can still call it asset blast so everything's going to be under assets and then blast and set in this case i just had it separated like this but so this is set to render geometry settings set to matte and that will do this holdout like this it's going to create a mask so we're not seeing the set at all so and also it's going to give us an alpha for that that's why it's important that you do have um, a proxy representation of whatever of your plate. So in this case, it would be, I mean, the thing we re uh, modeled is super basic. Honestly, it would be better if it was more uh, detailed, but because what you can do is, for instance, for shadows, this is what you get with the shadow pass. But then if you take the luminance key, so you get your alpha and then you mask this out, you kind of mask out the parts and it feels like that our geometry is actually here and it was very detailed. So a cool trick for compositing with um, live action footage. So you don't have to worry, but obviously if we had more time or if we knew how to model better, <laughs> we would probably model this a bit better. All right. So we have our blast here, importing uh, material library. Now, a very important trick here is to animate your properties, uh, the density and the color, uh, because if we look at our pass here, this whole start will feel like we are only seeing this emissive pass and that this is kind of what we want to see the most because this this is the part that looks looks the best so by animating it the shader having it darker you can clearly see it here maybe here yeah so by clearly having the shader darker it's not gonna be affected by the light as much so more of that emissive is gonna come through and then what i'm doing in the comp as well I'm bringing that down even more. So we get even more of that emissive happening. And then I'm animating the intensity. So by the end, it does merge together uh, with the smoke, but it feels like in the beginning, we're only seeing the emissive parts, which is pretty cool. Yep, yep, yep. So important. Uh, assigning it and then doing a render geometry setting for the velocity blur. Merging it. Doing the same thing for the smoke, merging it. Same thing for the trails, merging it. Uh, environment, light, it's just one HDR and a key light. Super simple, merging everything together, importing the cameras and then Karma render settings. Now we are using the XPU, which is super cool because it's quite fast. Uh, with the CPU, this would take probably uh, roughly maybe a day, like seven, eight, maybe 10 hours to render. But with the XPU, it takes, I think this took around three to four hours. Also, obviously it depends on your GPU, but it's quite fast as you can see here. Uh, the final was rendered on 264 samples, which is a bit higher. And then I'm um, going above HD, so multiplying it by 1.5, just so I get more of that uh, crispiness in the render itself. What you can do towards the end, you can go to, um, I don't think I did it for the five, but you can go to uh, image here and you can start denoising your passes. Uh, whatever you render out of Karma will work with this denoiser. Now, I'm not sure, these are not the final renders, 
these are one of the previous, uh, hope it doesn't crash, uh, previous test renders that I was doing. But you can see this part is a bit slow. There's not a lot of um, noise here. We'll probably see it here, yeah. Okay, so noise, and then you go through the denoiser, it's gonna clean it up quite a lot. Uh, and you can do that for, let's say this part, yeah. Super noisy, and then through the denoiser. It's kind of insane how much it actually uh, denoises it. Sometimes it's too much, so I put it to 0 0.8, but if you go to full one, it will remove all the noise, but it will be a bit blocky and sometimes you might get some flickering. But honestly, I mean, look at that. It's pretty crazy how good this actually works. So uh, you can do that in a lot of cases. So don't worry, like even if you render on 128 and your renders are a bit uh, noisy, you can denoise them quite a lot. In but obviously test it out beforehand, uh, do a few frames just to see if the denoising will work. So yeah, that's pretty much the rendering part. And then it's, um, this is all set to default XPU. I am splitting the lights. So I get the render passes here. So you get the combined emission, uh, key light and environment light. And so lights and emission, combined emission and split lights here. And then under volumes, you do combined volume. What else are we doing? Um, limits, volume limit set to three. You can go higher, especially this part will look even better. Uh, when you have the higher the volume lim limit, the more the light will penetrate and make this look prettier. Uh, the only problem is when you start doing more volume uh, passes let's go to 10 uh, the light will start penetrating more and more into these dark spots and it might look good but i found that obviously the render is going to get slower but in some cases i was losing some of the crispiness in these parts when once i went too high uh, and yeah the render Let's go a bit out. The render will also become quite slow, much slower. But yeah, you will see you're, you're gonna get like scattering and light penetration. But I felt like three was a perfect, a good enough uh, of a compromise in this case. And then uh, I wish, I'm not sure, <clears throat> uh, you get the light emission happening automatically on from the scattering on, on everything on the environment, which is cool. Uh, I'm not sure how to control that right now. If anybody has any recommendations on how to control the light coming from the explosions, uh, I would be happy to hear that. Uh, maybe it's coming in uh, the new version of Houdini, who knows? But yeah, that's it for the rendering, super simple stuff. So all of this here is the same, except for the bottom part. So we import the cameras and then we do a volume phantom. So you can do a wild card here and say type equals volumes and it will know um, all the smoke is a volume. So it will take all the volumes that you have and it's just gonna, it's gonna mask them out like so. And then we do a shadow property thing so this is a uh, background plate. Here are the output AOVs and this is the output stage. You can see additional render uh, variants and then input. So you, uh, when you go to rendering, so, sorry, image, you say import render uh, variants from the second input, which is this from our shadow property. And in our shadow property, you just point it to your plate. That's why we're seeing the plate here. And you say shadows per light, and you can do diffuse and emissive here. And what that will get, get you is the environment and the key. 
So those are the two passes that we need for the shadows. Uh, oops. Oh yeah, we're saving. Oh, oh. Oh no. This is uh, the danger, danger zone right here. Saving and rendering at the same time. Hello darkness, my old friend. Hey, we're back. All right, uh, render camera. See, it's going to line up. It doesn't have to be exact because of uh, uh, you fix that in comp. But as long as you get the uh, this shadow, this, this is the most important one. And then obviously this one works as well. Uh, but that's the important part. And then you just render this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's some good info if you go here and just uh, go to the question mark to go to the documentation about the shadow pass. I had to look it up as well. Uh, but it's going to give you some good examples of how to use it and how it all works. But that's how we're pretty much using it here anyway. So... Mm -hmm.